welcome guys to another tutorial that we have going on here and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to integrate into our kit for an upgrade system now as of right now we don't have any enemies so we have to use this cube for now now we have this little button which is temporary right now or it could be permanent depends on your game we're in build mode so we can click on a thing and go into turrets and we have turrets okay and we can build and stuff our building system isn't refined enough to keep from possibly you know going a little bit over but this could be a collider or something like that that's the issue I haven't really investigated into it because we have so many other things to integrate and like do better so with that in mind I've decided to do the upgrade system so we can upgrade these towers now I don't have any coloration or anything like that yet for which we're upgrading and things like that but if we hit this upgrade button we can go over the tower now and click and we get an upgrade so this is the upgraded tower I just colored it a little bit and everything else because well, it, it does what it needs to do, right? So, now, whew, I'm tired. We can go around and upgrade, and it, it deducts money and stuff. So, if we are out of money, it won't upgrade no more. But, we also have another level of upgradation. We've got another level, which I displayed black. And if we click again... We have no more upgrades, so we can't do anything. So this is obviously good for a lot of reasons, because now we can upgrade our towers to what we want. And, well, we do need to do some coloration on the upgradation and stuff like that where we hit something. But that's for another tutorial because there was a significant amount of changes to integrate this in and I didn't want to overload you guys with more code than what's needed. So without some further ado, let's see what it takes to create this. Okay, now these buttons, like I said, they can be temporary or permanent either way. I mean, it's just selecting what it needs it to do, or you can come up with a completely different system for switching. Doesn't matter to me. And, you know, we're pulling bullets and everything else, so it it's pretty decent. So, let's see what we have to do to make this. Now, most of the bulk changes is... Well, I wouldn't say in the managing class right here, but you'll get the idea. Now, just to give you a 411, we're switching this enum right here from build to upgrade when we hit this. You see what I mean? So later on, we could probably do a research one where we research where we could just build these turns instead of upgradation. But in the game I'm my design in the tower itself I have a upgrade to and then an upgrade cost so you could you could put this to halfway like let's say the tower itself that they want to build is a uh, a thousand uh, money okay so Instead of doing a thousand money, you can upgrade it for let's say 700. So you divide out how many towers you have and you know just calculate your upgrade cost. See, this one it cost me a hundred to upgrade it. So if we go up to our manager, we've got 9,980. Okay, and we click. The upgrade cost and we get that so 9880 and we click again it deducts money another hundred 
So that's something that you can deal with in your game, and it will be fine. Uh -huh. I'm really tired. But anyway, let's go look at some code and things to see what all we can, what was changed to create this. So let's swap over to some code, and of course you won't find the window because you're being a butt. So in this class, we have a new enum right here, and we have a new integer. <coughs> because I want to hit everything with my rays, I, I need these integers. Now I can make this an array of integers, but then it would complicate probably the code and everything. And you're probably thinking the, the enum that they give for layers would be enough, but if you did it, it'll give you some weird number like 250, and I don't really like that kind of scenario. It's kind of weird. Okay, so we got a bool can build, which we didn't have before and then we got a game object for hit target okay this right here has to exist always because what happens is in start we set it to build okay the default setting will always be build when we first start the level you know when this hits this start method okay and we have this this update which we didn't have before but I needed it to be an update because we uh, the cases inputs are always supposed to be an update anyway and this checks really really quickly and does stuff so you know that's just the way it's gonna be for that if we essentially something we're taking monies okay which we will be doing our own custom instantiation later on. So, you know, that's just 411. This code will be changed later on. Probably not long from now. And then uh, we have our case upgrade, which we do a hit target. If the hit target is null, then we bail. We just return out and we don't care. But if the hit target is not null, then we hit this layer, which is our build layer, which is just the ground plane, with the ground itself. If we hit the ground and we hit the fire button, we can do hit dot game object dot sim message td upgrade. Now we do this sim message here because I don't want to do a git component. And make sure that this is always here which you know TD upgrade we don't necessarily need to make sure that it's always there because it's probably part of the base class anyway but I like to do this because it doesn't require the function to even exist we don't have to hard code some kind of component in it just does it okay and I've got a case right here for research, which we haven't, I haven't done, but I am looking into a, a nice clean way of doing research. Now, down here, we've got our hit variable, which always exists. And this right here, if we're over a menu, I want to go can build equals false. Every frame, just go can build equals false. Now this is part of the fixed update because it deals with physics every frame, okay? It, it, it does it every single physical frame. And two, we need this to be in the fixed update because we're doing um, our spear cast for every single turn right here instead of in the turn class to be more efficient and scalable. And then we've got ray, point to screen physics right here which is doing it every single frame and if hit target hit transform dot game object does not equal null 
hit target equals hit transform dot game object. So we're just setting this hit target, okay? So it would be relatively easy to do something else like a physics check and things for, let's say, a uh, a um, <coughs> a physics check to make sure that there's not a turn there instead of just a single ray. And actually, believe it or not, this might end up being a spear cast anyway because a spear cast is very wide. And we can make sure that there's no turrets around when we do that spear cast. So this might change entirely later on. Don't know, haven't decided. So after we hit do this and everything, in this cycle, when it does this if statement, it also does this. Can build does can build function and return the bool. Now we pass in the enemy layer because we're checking in between these two and the function to make sure, hey, this is the enemy layer. Why are we doing the enemy layer here? The enemy layer. Why is it in the enemy layer anyway? It should be named something else. Oh, well, let's not get into naming too much right off the bat. So we've got this enum, which is our managing state. Pretty easy, okay? And then we've got an upgrade enum, which is an integrated, but you know, it's it's to come possibly. Now we have this do work function right here. This do work takes an integer. Now the reason why this exists is for those buttons. So we're going to temp code here for buttons in the Unity UI mode is a Oh, yes, this is in the base class. That's right. No, oh, it's actually in here, but mode is an enum, okay? But the problem is we need to make sure that it treats work as an enum. So we tell this, hey, make sure that you treat this as a manager managing state, and this is the state that you're going to go into. And if you're familiar with enums, this is nothing but an array. This is one, zero, okay, and then this is equals one, and this would be equal two, okay? It's an array. It starts with zero and goes on and goes on. So we want this mode to be set by this integer, so we have to... Basically, tell it, hey, treat it as this. Treat it like a number array. So, treat it like this, like a basic type of boom. And it will set this based on. We go in there, we hook up our button, which I don't think you need me to show you how to hook up a button. And we type in zero for build and one for upgrades. Okay, and this is the function that does that for the buttons. Add tower, remove tower is not different. This is not different. So in the base class, did we change anything? And the answer is yes, we did. We changed the way the start works. Okay. We put a virtual start manager equals this, okay? Now, the reason why we did this is to get a static reference to this. But it's not public. It's only accessible here. And the reason why is because 
we also changed a instantiation. So when we did our custom instantiation, we want to check for the money first. If we have less than the cost, then we bail. You know, if we don't have enough money, we just bail, right? Let's embiggen this a little. And when we do this, if we do have enough money, we instantiate the object at the position and the rotation. Because it basically does everything that the old one, the old instantiation in Unity does, but we do other stuff in there, like the object that we want to instantiate, the object that we want to destroy, and the object cost. So we instantiate, take her the money, and destroy the old. Okay? Very easy code. Now, TD destroy is not integrated in the game, but this is mostly for enemies. This is for enemies or sell the towers because we might integrate a cell in there so we give a game object the amount and boom there you go and TD destroy this is a different method it's the same one but it's Different overloads. See, we can give it the TD base of it. We can go the float amount and go this instead of the game object. Just basically, we're just giving it a different value here. Okay? Same code does the same thing, but we require a base script thing to destroy from versus the game object itself which may be we want to uh, kill the script that's on the tower and make it completely utterly useless forcing us to just you know abandon it or whatnot like that it could be very very plausible that we need this or maybe we need a function that destroys a tower's script so it doesn't do anything anymore and it just sits there and lays dead and then maybe we have a, a uh a little robot or something go down there and deconstruct it because it's you know it's destroyed and we get money for the the parts or something it it all depends on how what direction you want to take your game now this is a cell option which is basically this but i wanted another one for uh, if I wanted to change stuff around because it's it's kind of good to have different types you know around and make them explicit what do they do because maybe this one's for enemies only maybe this one's for selling so we can do some other crazy division or math in here or you know we need a pop-up menu right this could be part of the pop-up menu go hey we've got to run this function to do a pop-up menu and see how it's got manager got money this is a static reference to itself so if you're not used to statics and everything else the static reference will keep us from needing to go hey um making all these variables right here if you want to use them in a static function, you have to make them static, which I don't want them to be static because of various reasons. It's then I gotta go manage your base, dot money, dot this, dot that. It's kind of messy. I don't like it. And two, if you make these static, they're not able to be seen in the inspector, okay, which really sucks. So keep that in mind. These are dirt. Oh, and we just got a die function. Maybe when the tower dies, we just want to destroy the tower. <laughs> and here's the can build. Remember, I was telling you the layers got to match. 
and that's pretty much it for that. So in our TD savables, we give the name and a health. Late, I I feel that giving our game the way it's going, I think we're going to have where the enemies come in and try to destroy your towers and also destroy you. You know, maybe you're like your main base of operations or something that you're defending. And that that's the only thing I changed in this. Yeah. TD base. We did not change too much here. I believe. And yeah, I think we're pretty good on that. TD upgrades. Oh yeah, we did a TD upgrade. Okay, this is a, a a function that's just normal, and we use the instantiation here. Okay, but this is part of the base class itself. So every tower has access to this function. Okay, we could have made this static and everything else, but I want a variable up top. I believe it's up top, or no, it's not. Um, this upgrade versus the tower, okay, and then the cost. I want to be able to have a call function right here that's, that's part of the actual tower stuff. And then we had a virtual overrided one. Yeah, we did, I did a virtual overrided one right here because not all, um, towers maybe have the same... The, the same functionality and you'll see why probably later on well um, let's go into tower basic and take a look at this okay now game object bullet okay upgrade to and upgrade cost okay and uh, We've got our overlap experience. This is the upgrade. If the upgrade is null, we return. Okay. And then we call the function right here. That, But I wanted this overwritten because of each tower is going to have to have some type of unique um, attributes and stuff for the menu. Like the basic tower... I'm going to have to make a script for every single different type, okay? But basic tower can be pretty universal. It's only going to use the head and point where it needs to go. So it's going to be very tricky for me to – well, it's not going to be really tricky. I could do a switch in here or something like that. But then I have to have an overload in here to identify what – what what we should do and it's very messy so what I did was made this overwritable here because in our manager class we're gonna have these UI uh, panels come up that tell you hey do you want to upgrade to this and it's gonna give all the information and stuff to upgrade this okay it's gonna give the tower's health, current health, it's going to give um, what type it's going to upgrade to, you know, all this information. And I don't want to put this crap in this class and plug it up where it's doing all these different stuff. So what we're going to do is call like something like we're going to go into our managing class, TD managing gd managing dot and well we have these options that are static before like td die and stuff like that well instead of that doing that we are going to make it just point where the tower needs to go and give it our health 
in all the information that it needs, like health and the name, and then let the UI system go, hey, this is the, the function that was called, do a lookup of some kind, and pop up the panel. And then when the panel's up, it's going to tell you all the information, like about the tower, how much health it has, what tower it has, um, what it upgrades to, maybe a little picture on the panel. You know, it it's more flexible that direction than just hard coding something right here into the, the class itself. Because this could be a missile turn of anything. And if you do long cases, it's going to make it slow. So you definitely need to keep that in mind. <coughs> so I do believe that is the end of our little coding session. I don't believe there's any other changes that I need to uh, talk with you guys about. I think it's pretty much perfectly clear now what we're doing and what's going on. So I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and before we go we're going to see this in action again. There we go. And you know like I said should be relatively easy for you guys okay and we will instantiate and there's a button so it's pretty easy to get your your turrets upgraded now you should have the functionality to, to do so like so maybe in the next video we'll get this block moving in and out okay So it can be relatively decent, you know, make some form of a game or maybe I'll work on the logic for doing the towers itself. I haven't done the logic for placing the towers only because I did it on other videos and you can easily integrate that into this kit already. So it's the codes there. If you go back to my other tutorials, you'll be able to either do placement planes or do something a little bit dynamic like what we have here with one plane but that is clearly up to you guys so I hope you like the tutorial and if you don't there's a dislike button but uh take care guys and this is word on over and out and you can always look for other videos in my channel because I do various other things but um, take care and have a nice day and happy coding